Uh, welcome everybody on online stages event about courage and inner drive with uh, Frida Sumarjo from New Zealand, endurance athlete for many years. Frida, welcome. Hello. Uh, first, tell us how did you start it and why? What were the reasons? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, and um, it's it's so great to be here tonight. And thanks everybody for joining in. Um, Hi, Alicia, Angela, um, Stephen, hello. Um, yeah, so when I was in high school, I got into the cross country team and then I started running. Then I realized I really like running. So when I was 19, um, I did my first half marathon. And um, I've always enjoyed cycling as well. And um, so I put the two together and I was doing duathlon races, which is uh, biking and running combined. But it wasn't until um, in my mid twenties, um, I got into, hooked into the triathlon scene because I was having a conversation with a friend and she's happened to be a triathlete. And um, she said, oh, I've got a half Ironman race in a couple of weeks time. And I said, what's, what's a half Ironman? So she said to me, oh, it's a 2K swim, 90K bike ride and a 21K run. So I, I thought, hmm, okay. I've done a half marathon. I've done a 90K bike ride before. I can put these two together. I just have to learn how to swim. And um, so, yeah, so I said to her, oh, look, I'm going to do the race with you as well. And when I made that commitment, um, I, just, I just went to the pool and tried to do that 2K um, swim just so that I can get through the race. And, um, yeah, so that's how I started. And, I never looked back since. And um, it's just like a way to prove to myself that I can do anything that I've put my mind to. And that's probably why I got into this stuff. The things that I know I can't do yet, but will possibly be able to if I put my mind into it. It's great. Yeah. So for how long have you been competing uh, in the endurance sports and what was the hardest challenge, uh, challenges that you have evolved over the time? Um, so with the endurance training, um, uh, sorry, endurance running, biking and triathlons, almost 20 years now. Um, and I'll, the challenges, they always changes, but I'll break it down into, um, three parts. Um, the first initial challenge when I first got into the sports and then my challenge throughout the journey and also the latest challenge currently. Um, so the, obviously the first initial challenge was to get my swimming up to scratch. Um, learning to swim is really hard as an adult um, and it's not fun. You know, I always came last um, at the back of the field out of the water in a race and then I had to work super hard just to catch up on the bike and the run. And yeah, so I put some effort into my swimming and over the years, um, I kind of got a bit better and now um, I'm happy to come out in the middle of the swim pack. Um, swimming is not something that is my strength and, um, but it's okay because I actually enjoy doing it now. Um, it, you know, I don't have that mentality of thinking I have to swim because I actually, now I want to swim and yeah, so this is the swimming training overall so now is a lot more challenging, uh, sorry, enjoyable. Um, I don't feel as, 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 um, as a hard slog anymore. So yeah, I really enjoy swimming now. And um, the recovery factor is another one um, throughout this journey. This is another challenge that's always gonna be there for me is the recovery factor. Because when I started my career um, as a personal trainer, it was okay because I didn't have to do the workout. But then I switched to become a group fitness instructor. And being a group fitness instructor is a totally different ball game because you have to actually do the workout with, um, with, with your participants in a class situation. And I could teach up to four classes a day. And so fitting in the training between the classes was super hard as well because I would be going out um, training on a tired body on top of my classes and yeah so 
the state of fatigue, like when you're in a constant fatigue can be kind of become a norm. And I just got used to it um, over time. And these days though, I, I try not to, um, I try not to put so much pressure on myself anymore in terms of getting like in a top, whatever. I just do it now for, because I do love the sport and because I still teach group fitness classes. And um, even though I cut back a lot, um, I don't do it full time anymore. I just do it part time. But yeah, these days I just trying to balance it a bit, a bit more between teaching and also training. Uh, yeah, and I think it's really important that um, to look after my body as well because you know I'm so privileged and I'm grateful that I can do all of this stuff. But you know I'm not. I won't be human if I don't get the niggles and injuries as well. So I just have to be smart with how I, how I train and how I work. Hmm. And the latest challenge being um, currently lately, as you know, that we're in a COVID situation. So um, New Zealand went into the lockdown at like um, in April. So we had a full lockdown and the pool, the gym was shut and I couldn't do any swimming. So, um, what I did then was that I had to just forget about the swimming and just spend a little bit more time on running. And obviously you can't go out for long bike rides because, you know, you have to stick around in your suburbs. So, um, yeah, I literally was going around and around, um, doing my training just around my neighborhood really. And, as well as that, all, the, all my events has been cancelled. So I love traveling overseas and doing events. So I had two events has been cancelled. One, one was in Philippines. That was meant to be in August last week. And another one coming up in Melbourne, which also has been cancelled. So they're all they're half Ironman events that I love doing. So yeah, so I haven't got really much to train for at the moment, but um, there is a... Um, an, um, it's called the, the Epic Camp. So I've signed up for that. So we're gonna be about 30 of us. Uh, we're gonna be um, cycling from Nelson to Invercargill in South Island, New Zealand. So it's about 1,100 K and we're gonna do it as a team. And it's like a triathlon camp as well. So not only um, I'll be cycling, but I'll be running and swimming in the pool um, most days. Yeah, so that's not till the end of October. But in the meantime, um just keep doing the training um yeah again with no pressure so it's, it's quite a nice change and um yeah we'll see what happens hopefully we'll still be on by the end of november um october sorry um yeah see how new zealand is with the COVID situation that's great yeah so um could you tell us about the hardest moments uh, in your career that you had to overcome? Well, I think my toughest challenge so far when I was, 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 when I was training for Coast to Coast, um, it's a multi-sport event that involves mountain running and kayaking in the rapids. And Stephen, I know you know all about this, <laughs> you know, the journey that I went through um, to get to the start line. And yeah, I've never been an off-road type of athlete and all of my triathlon, the biking and running races have always been on the road. So this one really put me like 500% out of my comfort zone. And running in the rocks and big boulders, it's not really my cup of tea. And that's what I had to do. Um, yeah, the whole training itself took me about two years to do it because I had to learn how to kayak from scratch. Um, the kayak leg itself was such a huge part of the event. It was like a 70K paddling in the rapids. And every time I get on the kayak, there's always fear because I, I don't know what the river would do and what the rapids, how the rapids were going to hit me, you know? So anyway, um, on the day I managed the mountain, mountain running okay, but I almost didn't finish the race um, because of hypothermia. Uh, on the kayak, uh, I got brutally, brutally beaten by the rapids and took lots of swims. And at the halfway point, which is the about 30 k of the paddle, um, when I come out again out of my kayak, 
uh, was picked up um, out of the water by the rescue team um, and they literally just had to stop me and wrap me in a in a in an emergency blanket and put me in a medic tent this is for like 45 minutes because apparently my heart rate was really low and um, my temperature was not good and they said to me oh you know you should not continue you could not continue like this you know look after your health and at that point you know like i was just in such a big adrenaline i'm like let me get on back on my kayak you know um anyway um after about yeah 45 minutes to an hour in the medic tent i started feeling better um and my temperature has gone back up and um yeah my heart rate was went back to normal and i said please please can i please get on the kayak can i just want to finish this race and they said uh, what about your kayak they're full of holes <laughs> and literally i had to use all of my duct tapes that I had with me to patch up all the holes. And then they said, okay, if you continue, we just have to keep an eye on you. I said, yes, please. I just need to, I just need to get on with it. I just want to keep going. So anyway, miraculously, they said, okay, well, well let's, let's, let, let's try it. So uh, to this day, I really don't know how I actually got to that finish line. That's just, all the stuff that I went through in the second half of the paddle as well, of the last 30K of the paddle. Yeah, things still happen there. But yeah, when I got out of the kayak, I'm like, Shh, I made it. <laughs> just unbelievable. I was just such an incredible feeling. And, um, and I knew I only had the 70K bike ride to go. And that's, for me, that's my, my, happiest, my happiest place on my bike, you know, on the road. So yeah. So I got to the end and um, yeah, just really, really thankful and blessed that I could have, I could finish that race and just, yeah, just really, really happy. But that was one of the hardest moments for me because never ever I felt so mentally uh, down and beaten in a race before. Yeah, so, but it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome when I've, now I've done it. Uh, so uh, you have your next event on uh, 8th of September. What's your next event going to be? Oh, yeah, this is, this is another type of event. Um, when, um, when I was asked to do this, you know, I always think, oh, I'm not, you know, I was really anxious about doing this because, um, you know, how am I going to be good at this talking to people like this in front of everybody? And but you know what? I really just, this is just, I guess this is just an introduction of, of, of what I, what I do. And, but my passion actually lies in seeing some um, people grow um, and seeing people trying their best and um, not accepting no for an answer and just, and not accepting that this is it. This is all you can do. You know, if, if when I see somebody, um, you know, keep, you know, when when they keep trying and they put the effort and they aim for big, big things, to me that's that's awesome. And I I, I love I love seeing people putting in their commitment, and um, that's why um, to me, when you sit in discomfort, it it is such a um, important thing to be there because when you sit in discomfort when you have such a um when you have challenges that's when you grow you know and um, i think when you have that then um it's a first when you accept that you need to be in discomfort then that it will be your first step of um um continuing um to be better um uh, improving so yeah so when they said to me, oh, you got to do another talk after this introduction, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so just to, just to let everybody know that I'm, um, I'm going to carry on with this chat thing and um, my next one will be on discomfort. Um, and yeah, just, just seeing how being there um, can make you grow as a person. And it teaches so many lessons, and um, it's I think it's a must um, because nothing comes easy. Um, you have to work for it. And um, but as I said to many people, 
as much as you want to be in discomfort, you have to love what you do. You have to enjoy what you do. Like there's no point in chasing something that you don't want to do or you don't enjoy. Exactly. Yeah. So that will be my next talk on the September the 8th. If, um, yeah, if anybody want to come along and um, join me. Yeah. Rida, um, I would like to thank you for your talk. It was really inspiring and I'm looking forward for the next one. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, it's so good to see everybody here. Um, those that know me, I, I'm really good at the one-on-one -on -one thing, but when, when it comes to the, even though I teach group fitness, but this is a totally different thing, you know? So I really appreciate you guys just um, tuning in and um, it's just nice to see faces, which I haven't seen for, for a bit. Um, since the COVID thing, you know, so I um, want to give everyone a hug, a virtual hug. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well thank done, Frida. <laughs> we have to catch up soon. Can we go for a run? Oh, I don't know if I'm quick enough to stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, good for, I'm good for just slow catch up trot. That would be cool. And so with the sounds great. Also, Sorry, I missed it. See yeah, ya. Yeah, with you as well, Hazel. We'll catch up. Yeah, I know. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, once this lockdown's over. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thanks, Kev. That went way too Thank quickly. Huh? <laughs> Thanks, Rita. Bye, Carmel. <laughs> Yeah. See, Karma, we have to go for another jog. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that'd be great. Except we'll um, we'll we'll talk about what jog means. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can maybe you can do like, like the fun thing. Like plod. Yeah. Plod, maybe. I'm good for <laughs> plodding. I'm good for that. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'll talk to you again soon, eh? See you later. Great work. See ya. <laughs>